there's a couple of things that uh, I want to talk about today. One of them is um, self-promotion. It's one of my uh, pet peeves. It's one of the things I hate doing the most. Um, when I look at my life and I think about like, uh, how, how people promote themselves, a lot of the time, uh, especially in business and, um, and in writing, people do interviews and things, but you watch the interviews and you can't help but think they're only doing the interviews to promote something. It's like if you watch a movie star, you know, they've gone to, the whole point of their attendance is, is to promote the movie and I just find it pointless. Uh, okay, it's getting attention, but it gets attention in other ways anyway. Um, you can just leave a, a trailer or something on uh, YouTube or something. So that's important to gallivant around the world doing all that. And it wouldn't be something that I would enjoy. And I think if you don't enjoy something, it becomes apparent anyway. So it's counterproductive, I think. Um, but there's obviously, you can be ingenious, inventive with the way you promote without having to be a burden to yourself. Um, so I've come up with a couple of little tricks that I've done that still uh, get some attention on my, on my work without me having to put any time into that. So one is I've got a dating profile and, you know, it's a sincere dating profile. It's a dating profile to be dating, um, even though I haven't really progressed within it. Um, I'm, still, <laughs> I'm very reluctant, to be honest, um, for various reasons, which I actually spoke about in the previous video. But within one of the photos, I put a picture of my first book uh, because it, it's, it's useful because people can then see that you have done something substantial. But also, if people are interested in you in any way, they'll go and check out that book. Um, and I am pretty sure for the most part that's worked. Uh, it's, done, it's done well for something that's so simple as a photograph. Uh, so again, like I said uh, before, people will, if someone likes something enough, they'll share it with their friends, they'll share it with their family, they may even go on social media and create a post about it. Um, so that one little thing creates an opportunity for growth and it doesn't burden, in my situation, it doesn't burden me. Um, I don't have to worry about it, I don't have to think about it. Um, the other one is I've got an ad, Amazon ad, ad campaign going. Um, I spent some time trial and error doing a little research on the best prices to sell it out to you because obviously the whole point is to make a profit, not throw everything down the drain. Um, yeah, sales could be a lot better, but at the same time, as long as there's um, as long as there's sales anyway, I think it's po that's positive in itself. It's when it dries up, you get a bit, it can be concerning. Um, but for the most part, it's working not to the substantial level, but then at the same time, I might put a substantial effort into the promotion. No, I'm not. Um, it just doesn't interest me. I can't see myself going around doing interviews and things based on my books. So, um, someone actually said they saw me doing the interviews, actually. Yeah, right, a psychic. But it's not something I actually want to do, so I'm not sure I would, because I'm very stubborn. If I don't like doing something, I don't care if someone says, well, it's, it's beneficial, because that, uh, it's not beneficial to my mental health if I don't want to do something, you know. Um, and I think there's, like I say, different ways of doing it. And I think there's also in the media, there's obviously an issue with um, journalists picking out what they want to see uh, and then having a, and then manipulating it so they can seem like they, they're listening and really they're just looking for ways to, to, to rip you apart. Um, so I have a trust issue in that regard because I see it all the time. Um, there was a time actually when I applied to, to, a, to a, a newspaper for a for position, but then straight after applying, I thought, I, ain't, I wouldn't even take it if they offered me it because, you know, of course, when you're thinking about being a writer, you're looking at areas you can explore. But I couldn't write for a newspaper because they, they tend to pick people apart for no reason, just for entertainment. And I, don't, I think it's savagery. Um, it's deplorable, it really is. So could break some tear someone's life apart um just just to have a headline i don't, I don't see the benefit in that at all and i think it's disgusting it's like i wrote in uh, my book here you mind for yourself um if the news was positive it would create a positive positive world everybody would um it would heal the planet but there's so much negativity in the in the new in the media it just spreads negativity um, so is there a real reason to tear someone apart or can you actually do something positive and say about all the wonderful things happening and the, and the growth that someone's gone through, you know, um, and the changes. I think people would still be want to listen to that. I think it would inspire, but they always go negative. Um, so I wouldn't want to be a part of that. So yeah, I wouldn't ever write for a, for a newspaper, especially in the way modern news is. It's just that I ain't interested in that um, headline grabbing nonsense to just ruin lives. I think it's disgusting. Um, that's my opinion on the news. Uh, 
wait for them one day to try and tear me apart because I'll tear them apart back because I never let people walk over me. So that'd be fun. So if a, <laughs> a journalist or a news editor tried to come at me, I'd certainly find ways to come at them. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, let's get back on track. So I thought, I'm not looking to self-promote. I'm going to talk about my books, but I'm going to do it because I, I don't want to do it in a self-promoting way. It might seem self-promoting, but in my eyes it's not. If I just stood here and just showed my books and did that, I think that's that's no good to me. That's, that's just that self-promotional. Uh, I thought I'd talk slightly about them because what it is actually, when I look at my soul journey, my growth, it's actually, it's remarkable how the books have, transfer, have taken place, the way, the, the way they're heading. Um, if we just talk briefly about um, A Father's Law, now that was my first book. A Father's Law, I was fighting for justice through the family courts. Um, it was my first marker, the first book I ever wrote, and it was like, it was, um, it was a surprise to me. I, I always wanted to write a book, but I never knew what I would write about or when that would ever happen, if it would ever happen. I always dreamed of having a typewriter. I finally recently bought typewriters. Um, so it's good. It's wonderful that I achieved a personal goal, but my biggest life goal, one of my biggest. Um, so that really in itself was remarkable. But then you think about the content of it, you know, it's about me and my daughter, uh, family court, separation from her, for, when she was taken away by her mother. So it's kind of like, what happened? It's, it's, it's a negative and a positive. It's, it's heartbreaking, it's traumatizing, but it also gave me my biggest accomplishment. So it's like there's beauty in the chaos. Um, yeah, and it's, the, it's weird, it's the catalyst that changed me the most. If it hadn't happened, I would have still been wasted so much time trying to appease her mother, trying to support her. You know, if she's been dramatic, I'm putting my life on hold for. Um, it's such a waste of my time, which in high, which at the time I didn't see. I thought I was being a saviour, um, but really it was just stifling me, my growth, and she was just using me to benefit herself. Um, I don't want to go too deep in that side of things, but that happening as heartbreaking as it was opened me up to go on this wonderful spiritual journey i've been on and this um finding myself again and really just climbing and ascending every day um, every year is quite remarkable i would say that now but i uh, wonder what's gonna happen next year because this year's been so mental uh, the previous years have been remarkable um what else is there and it's like every time it's an elevation uh, uh, and it's it's crazy it really is and it all started with this first book of heartbreaking um, a father's door yeah, so it just showed my way through family court, really, where I'm trying to fighting up against judges, I'm fighting up against the social system, I'm fighting up against the mother. Um, I don't stop. I travel vast distances, I spend time with my daughter, we have a great time together. No one wants to listen to us throughout the process. Um, it's always like a manipulated narrative that I'm up against. Um, so many lies and deceit. Um, we don't always get the results we want, which I think is heartbreaking and the headphones are going funny yet again um, but anyway that's the one that gets the most attention lately um, and then we've got a follow-up book so I was only ever going to write this book it wasn't going to be anything else I was done with it I was like okay I've told what happened let's move on in life then I was on um, Twitter because at the time I was on social media and I had a deep genuine following on Twitter and People were gravitated towards my book and the story. Um, at one point, I actually stopped selling the book to try and appease the mo her mother, um, and, it, and that really affected sound. So I think once you get once you've got um, momentum, it's best to keep it. Uh, I lost a lot of momentum through that. Um, so anyway, I put the book back up, and people were interested, but not to the same scale. But they really wanted to. But the people that had read it already wanted to hear what happens next, and I was like, well, sort of, you know, roughly what's happened next because they're talking. Um, but they wanted a book, they wanted a book, they wanted a book. Um, and so that's how Heartbroken Daughter came. It came through the desires of others. It was, okay, I'll tell you what happens next. Um, but within this one, it's, a, it's not as quite as big as if I was thought in terms of pages, but it's still about 250, yes, yeah, about 250, 250 pages. But within this one is the actual development of spirituality. Now, if I could just briefly touch on that, my spiritual journey started remarkably everything's remarkable it's crazy um i was literally at a moment in my life where i was thinking there must be more that exists here because i was seeing number patterns all the time especially 11 11 i've had that for a lot of my life so it's 
I suppose you know, you start looking into this because if astrology is so accurate a lot of the time, it begs the question of what is. Um, and I'd had the psychic reading where they told me about my daughter being in the hospital, which she was, and it, it, it loaded a lot of things that happened. So I was interested in delving into spirituality and it said in my horoscope, someone will come into your life and aid you in your pursuit to understand, to delve into spirituality or something, because you're curious. And I thought, that's really weird, because that's exactly what I'm feeling in that exact moment. Um, and then Laurie, this woman Laurie on Twitter, she came out with nowhere. She'd just read my, my first book, um, A Father's Daughter. And straight away, she just, we didn't know each child. She sent me a, a, a private message with loads of information on um, sort of astrology and things. Um, and sent me to a video, I think it was Matt Carr. And it was, everything was making sense to me. It was like crazy that it was prophesized in the sense of just in that. I've had a lot of things like this happen in my, um, in my life. There was a couple of more, I can't remember one of them now, but one was someone's going to come to you. Yeah, that's it. Someone was going to come to you and you're going to collaborate and work on something together. That was later in the year. And then after I saw that, I think it was about three or four months later, um, Kristen approached me. She had a bigger following than me. She was far more advanced in her spiritual journey, um, being able to do tarot readings and things. But she was, she's magnetising, you know, you couldn't help but want to just be drawn into her. Uh, air phone's going funny again. Um, so it happened how it was prophesied. Um, I had the sign and then it happened. And I didn't reach out for it. I didn't try to make it happen. It just happened. Um, so it was like, well, okay, things are accurate here. Um, and another thing that around that time, I had signs saying that I'm going to work in religion, religion or spiritual uh, that's the direction I was heading in. That's what I'm going to work in. I thought, what's that going to be? I'm not going to work in a church. I don't even believe in religions. Um, it's the only thing I could think of if you're going to work in religions and spirituality or, or whatever direction. That is a, a church, surely. But I thought, that's not possible. I wouldn't work in something like that. Um, lo and behold, if you look at the way my, my books have grown, I've gone in that direction without even, I wouldn't say meaning to, without knowing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite remarkable. And it said, um, your angels and spirit will support you. You'll, you'll be a novice in it. You won't feel, you might not feel um, good enough, but you'll be supported through it. And um, so within a heartbroken door, there is a couple of chapters here where I do, do talk about my experience with certain people. Um, another one was Elaine who can um, communicate with sort of um, dead the, the, the ones who have passed and there's some remarkable moments in, in within that um and i literally touched on a, a couple of times about this in this about um psychics and things and it, and it wasn't even intentional it was just part of what have i done in that period and that's exactly what this that, that was like the marker so i've gone through trauma in this book i'm working after family call through issues with her, with my daughter's mother then it's the it's, it's sort of like the uh, the seed my spiritual journey so that's really incredible so then imagine a year later after releasing that book um i'd met Kristen as it was prophesized uh, we met towards the end of december um by the end of january we'd already agreed we we're going to start writing a book february we, i think mid-february we really started uh, working on it and it gathered pace we'd, we'd had it all finished by april may um i worked rapid i was pushing her along um, she's very different to me in some ways. Her mind scatters all over the place. I think it's like ADHD. So she's always got something on the go and another idea and it's keeping her in check really, um, keeping her focused. But her, everything she said was pearls of wisdom too and it's all included, it's all included. So she would say it to me and I'd type it um, for the most part. And we made created something remarkable and I'd say in maybe three months, in three or four months we made a huge book and if that is not a sign, if that is not validation of the uh, the sign that I will do something in spiritual, at spiritual religion, and God and angels will support you, um, 
if that is not validation, I don't know what is, because how the hell can I go from starting a spiritual journey the year before to writing a huge book, a huge book, um, it's 400 and something pages um, in less than, in around three or four months. That's just crazy. I hear people taking years to write books and it, it literally only takes me three or four months to write books, especially stuff I already know about. Um, so this was uh, quite remarkable and having Chris alongside me was just absolutely life changing. Like, it will stay with me forever. Um, just the journey we went on and, and and the knowledge she gave me, it's it's made it's helped make me who I am now, you know. Um, but she said something from God. I'm gonna just read it here because I really want to share it. Um, there's a couple of things I want to share just quickly. So this is what God said to me. He referred to me as the scribe, um, which you know shocked us, and also said he about me. He has the innocence of a child. But wisdom of the ancients. Um, I thought that was so remarkable because people are always um, <clears throat> people always sort of pigeonhole me and they don't really understand. They see me being goofy and silly, especially in like workplaces and things, and they don't give me the credit I, I think I deserve. You know, I don't get the credit sometimes. Um, people closest to me they take me for granted, but they don't appreciate. Um, what I can do and, and my knowledge and things that it's just and I think that's a way in life in general people always take you for granted and it's usually the strangers who see the most in you and there's someone who has been a remarkable on my journey spirit whispers 1111 um she's sort of been a blessing in my life she when I first went on TikTok and then my spiritual journey started it was, it was it was she was one of the ones she saw me doing things um she said spiritual teacher um she, she has some visions that she's shared with me and she has been my biggest supporter really uh, incredible and that's someone that started off as a stranger um so i digress i digress uh, let me just find one more thing in this book because it was um, something kristen actually did it wasn't me everybody was people were coming at kristen um 295 because people try to mimic or they just try to put her down because that's what people do sometimes um but also now i don't know what's happened to kristen she's gone off the uh, grid at the moment um, she's very different to me um so she had a message from god this isn't my message from god this is kristen's this is what she had and i thought yeah damn that touched that touch that was powerful bear in mind we're spiritual we're not religious um so people that come against us from religions I just wonder what signs they receive because I really don't think they do. Uh, but I don't want to go into that. Um, so this is a channeled message for anyone who thought that God was separate from them. This is God speaking. You asked me for strength. I gave you struggle and strife. Um, before I continue, I just want to say I'm getting huge goosebumps right now. And they're usually confirmations. That's quite crazy. I'm really getting goosebumps and I've only just started. So let's just start again. Message from God. This is a channeled message for anyone who thought that God was separate from them. This is God speaking. You asked me for strength. I gave you struggle and strife. You became stronger after every battle. Today there's nobody that can defeat you. You asked me for prosperity and unconditional love. So I humbled you. I showed you that not everybody is your friend. I showed you the true intention of people and helped you understand equal give and take. You needed to learn how to set boundaries and be comfortable saying no. I showed you that not everybody is a victim. So you didn't try to save the world. I had to show you. You deserve the wealth coming to you so that when you receive it. I'm sorry, my ears going funny again. Usually is a sign. You're wise enough to keep it. Invest in it. And not give it away. Every time you ask for something, I prepare you for it. As you know, my blessings come in disguise. What you thought was a tragedy was my way of putting my armour on you. I know for a long time you thought that I forgot about you or I was torturing you. You kept asking me what you did to deserve this. You couldn't hear me because your anger was so loud. But I kept telling you you didn't do anything wrong. You did everything right because now you'll understand your worth and your value and how important you are to me. 
Just because you couldn't see my hand doesn't mean it wasn't there. I was leading and guiding you the whole time. What do you think picked you up every time you fell? You were so focused on failure and weakness, you didn't even see all the strength and wisdom you gained. Your creator. Um, I mean, like that touched me so deeply. I think I got really emotional at one point when I read it in the past. Um, that is just so powerful. And even just reading it now, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. That's exactly how I've grown. That's how I've grown. That's how I've grown. It won't always be the case. I mean, <laughs> even within that, I'm like, okay, that, that makes sense to my life too. Um, I've set incredible boundaries with people. Um, so after that book, I realised that not everyone's spiritual, not everyone's going to be interested in, the, in that side of things. So how can I help people who aren't spiritual and don't want to be overwhelmed or overburdened with, with that? Because it, the people that don't want to, I don't want to force it upon them. But there was poles of gold within that book. Um, there was things that were said about society and just living our life. Um, but how can I get it to people without throwing the spiritual side? And that's how Heal Your Mind to Free Your Soul came about. It was, okay, okay, we're not going to throw the spiritual side. You don't need to worry about that or concern yourself with it. How can you live a, a balanced life, really? Set boundaries with people. Don't keep chasing money. The fool's gold. It just, it's time-consuming and it ruins lives. You see the greedy, um, they hide behind the idea that they're doing it for their family, but really they're not. They're, they're just doing it because they're self-obsessed for the most part and then families get ruined. They find themselves alone. It's like, where was the, where, where, what was the benefit in that? Um, it's like gamblers, you know, they just don't know when to stop. Um, and that was a big thing that bothered me because I see so many people, are people their lives sort of chasing the money and I just think, what are you doing it for? When does it stop? How much money do you need to be happy? Um, and then it goes on to other, you know, other areas. You see gangs, you see theft. You know, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, it's just money. Just learn to just enjoy yourself. You know, something as simple as going to the beach, going for a walk. You know, um, it's all free. You don't pay for these things. It's the beauty of life, beauty of the planet, beauty of the world. You know, you just enjoy what you have, and you don't need so much. You can have less, have a little, and you can have little and have more, um, effectively. I cover a lot of things within Heal Your Mind to um, Free Your Soul and I go on to the meaning of life in the best way I possibly can. Um, delving into spirituality. Um, uh, yeah, I just think, and, and the boundaries, setting boundaries, kindness. But there was another chapter I actually did, was about um, children was a really powerful chapter for me. I, 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 I wanted to show that, because it got me thinking about I see people shouting at their kids in the street all the time and you, you, can't, you can't help but notice the um, the distance between parent and child and you think, are they ever going to be able to recover that? Because if they could, especially if they continue doing what they're doing, it's never going to heal. Um, and it's like, wait a minute, you didn't have to be like that. And, some, and then you go too far and then you lose control of the child anyway. You lose their respect, but then they just it's hard to get it back. Um, you see the TV show, I think it's the, the Nanny, where they're having to deal with these crazy kids. I mean, it's like, wait a minute, if we'd set boundaries in the first place and you'd been a bit more of a role model, you wouldn't be in that situation. It's about taking, spending time with your children. That's the biggest thing. Because it's like, it's like adults even. People lash out when they, when they, when they don't feel valued. Uh, if you're not going to give someone the attention they need, it's like, wait a minute, that's not right. Because if you're supposed to love them and care for them, then you really should be a role model for them. Um, if we're going to prioritise everything else, but it doesn't make sense. And again, that comes around to money. People think if I make a, a, load, a lot of money, that's enough to satisfy someone. And it's not. They want time. People want time together. That's what they want. Um, and that's far more important, far more precious. Um, but again, the fools chase the money. Healing and forgiveness and... Oh, living a life of excuses. People always make excuses for why their life is so hard, never taking ownership or acknowledging that it's their own decisions that happened. Um, I'm writing about that at the moment. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, people always want to put the blame on other people as to why their life's so hard. But they do it to themselves for the most part, and it's up to us to acknowledge it, grow and change. Um, and it's like drop the ego, humble ourselves. If you can humble yourself, then you can acknowledge where you found if you've done if you've been if you've done wrong. Um, you can apologise and actually try to improve. Um, and that takes the death of the ego, doesn't it? Because it takes some courage and guts to actually acknowledge it and be vulnerable enough to say it. Um, so that's quite huge. 
So that was the books at the moment. There are other books I'm writing. I'm going to be writing the final book in the Father's Daughter series because um, I want to. Um, this, like I said yesterday, it's going to be a couple more books in the Heal Your Mind for Your Soul because there's too many. I wrote, I've got chapters in mind for that. Then there's another one I want to write in the future, but I'm not going to touch on that yet because it's going to be time consuming and I've got other ventures I want to sort of maybe pursue that are like opportunities maybe that don't quite exist yet, but I'm certain they'll come. But I just want to touch on one more subject before we finish is um, staying true to yourself. When you go on, oh, it is again. Once you go on the, the soul journey, your growth, it's important you stay authentic. Um, don't get swayed. These ears are getting on my nerves. It's usually the ear that would ring normally. If I didn't have my headphones in, my ears would ring. Um, and it's usually a sign of confirmation. So, of course, with the headphone in, it's going to cause havoc with the headphone. And I'm sure is that what's happening because it doesn't, it, it wouldn't normally do that if I'm not talking. I wouldn't normally have my headphones playing up like this. Um, But yeah, people will grab you and drag you into their lifestyle. So on holiday, I went to Crete um, in Greece. I went with family members. Now I knew the family members would be a bit chaotic because they're different to me. They they just want to go drinking and partying. Uh, but with no like consideration of any consequences or anything, it's just completely unrelentless. Um, and they embarrass themselves sometimes, and then they have to sort of hide away because they've got no self control. Um, no boundaries and they just can't read the room you know um, you've got to read your audience that and that's one thing so it usually goes too far and if I'm not going to get involved in this I came on holiday to relax that was the whole point it's been stressful so many years it's my first holiday in like 15 years I thought I've come on holiday to relax to enjoy other cultures um, and I'm surrounded by people who are just interested in sort of the nightlife really and preparing for the nightlife by getting drunk during the day. And it's like, well, that ain't, that ain't fitting to me. I'm not doing it. Um, when I was younger or in the past, I could have joined in. I could have just got on with it. But I thought, I'm making an example here. I'm not doing it. I'm go I've come here for my purpose and that's what I'm doing. So I was arrogant. I was obnoxious. It was that. And I don't acknowledge that because when I put my ego at the forefront, I do it to protect myself. So no one's coming near me if I don't want them near me. And it's like, there's no sway in that. I can be approachable when I want to be, but I can also be quite arrogant when I, when I want to be too. Um, so they sort of made friends with everyone at the meeting, but these people they knew nothing about, all of them just as nutty as the rest. Um, it was all younger people, really. So my attitude was, just because you're friends with someone doesn't mean I have to be friends with them. It's like, I'm not going to do that. Friends by acquaintance, you know? Um, I have no interest, uh, so you do you and I'll do me. But it bothered people because they thought, so like the, the friends they made friends with, you know, you could see they were expecting me to give them my, you know, my attention, um, but I wouldn't give them it. Because I thought, I don't know you, I didn't choose to be friends with you, it's not my business, you be you can chat to them all you like, but I didn't come here for this. Um, so yeah, I would just walk <laughs> one minute, one moment, my niece, I think, said, yeah, he's, um, I can't remember what she said, like, he's doing this or he's going to do that. But then I'd already walked off, so it, it, I found it quite funny as I was walking off. Um, but yeah, so there's sides, there are different sides to me, but I think, you know, it's about setting boundaries, really, um, and showing sort of my family that I'm not going to keep mindlessly following them. It's like if you, put, if you follow someone into chaos, you're part of the chaos, you know. And I thought whatever they create, whatever trouble they get themselves into, it's none of my business. Um, and eventually, my nephew and my niece both had like a day or two where they sulked in their room because um, the groups change. You know, some people can't return from holiday and a new group turns up and, it, and they, they end up treating every group the same as they did the previous. So not everyone's the same and not everyone wants to be treated like that. So they didn't get on with a couple, with a couple of times with some people. And yet I continue walking around how I like, you know, I don't care. <laughs> I'm ambivalent to everything. I was just enjoying myself, really, just being me, just not letting um, people near me who I didn't come to meet, you know? So I just wanted to spend time with my family. That's all I wanted. And I can't tell people not to spend time with other people if that's what you want to do. But what my point is, is I'm not going to follow you to talk to all those people. Um, I'll meet you when I'm ready, when, when we're ready to be together. We always had our meals together. We always we went on like, days out excursions. So it's not like I isolated myself. It was just when it was time for them to hang out with whoever they want to hang out with, I'm like, that's 
I'll go and chill because I'm not interested. Um, like I say, people will take that as he's got um, an ego. And yeah, I admit, I, yeah, I had an ego. I did it on purpose. Um, and I'm good like that. So I can keep people at arm's length when I need to. And again, that's like what we just said in there about the boundaries. I set that boundary. Uh, when I got home, I thought, yeah, I could have just let go loose and enjoyed myself really. But I just, I had to make an example for myself. I had to show myself that I can do that. Um, when you're the odd one out, can you stand amongst the crowd and still be you, you know? Uh, and that's what I did. So I did it, but it was all, everything was done purposely. Um, I knew it would probably happen. And then when it did, I was just like ambivalent. I was, I was like, I'm me, I'm walking amongst the crowds and I don't care what anyone thinks of me. Um, because that's powerful. That's very powerful. If you can do that. Um, but yeah, I had a wonderful holiday apart from that. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to show people that it's okay to be you in a crowd when maybe you're misunderstood, um, unappreciated. Uh, maybe taken for granted in some ways because I think that happens too. It's like I can't understand that need and desire for other people's attention when you've already got it from people that care about you, you know. That's the part I don't really understand. I was there to spend time with my family and it's like, why, why is everyone, why is everyone split off? It's a bit like where everyone gets their phones out, you know. So rather than spend quality time with each other, everyone's always looking for satisfaction elsewhere and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Um, if you have a girlfriend or you make a best friend, then I get it. Or but always got, got a partner, let's not say girlfriend because obviously um, but apart from that, why not just spend time with those you cherish, you know? Um, and I think the sad part is when people go chasing other people continuously and then um, they're left to themselves after, they probably wonder why the people closest to them don't bother. And they say, mate, you've just been running all over the place, avoiding, like, not even been interested in spending time, you know? Um, so actions have consequences too. I was never rude to my family, I was just rude to strangers. So. But yeah, so as refined as I am, there's always learning exercises as well. Um, I can be approachable when I want to be approachable. I can be goofy when I want to be goofy. I can be serious when I need to be serious. And I think it's important that we understand that about ourselves too. You know, it's not about public perceptions and trying to look like I'm the best person in the world because, you know, we all have our flaws and we all have our, um, maybe the things that make us different. But anyway, yeah, I wanted to touch on all that. I don't think I promoted my books very well, but it wasn't supposed to be promoted anyway. It was supposed to be just sharing them, really, to tell a little bit about each book, why they happened, how they came to be, what's likely to come in the future, um, and really show maybe some of the part of the, um, the journey I've been on, which has been quite remarkable, to start with a traumatic incident, to then grow and go on a huge spiritual journey in such a short space of time, and not only go on a spiritual journey, but share that journey, document it, um, yeah, that's been quite incredible. Um, so when people say things happen for a reason, it's part of the journey. It's like, yeah, that is part of some journey. Um, and if you can just acknowledge it and to go and then enjoy, embrace the ride, you really do um, evolve and grow. Wow, you know, it's quite funny because in the past, people thought I was lazy. They prejudged me, never realizing what I did behind the scenes. Never, just never appreciate. It. I mean, even to this day, people don't. People closest to me just take me for granted and uh, they don't see the hard work I put in. So when I see success, they'll be surprised and they'll be like, well, he was pissing about. <laughs> I was creating something. Um, but I always did everything on my terms. You know, when I want to enjoy myself and chill out, I'll do that. I don't force myself. But when I work hard, I work hard. You know, I throw myself into into things. I don't mess about. It's a bit like where I just started exercising lately. I wanted some, uh, some equipment instead of just buying a little bit of time. I just got everything I needed. <laughs> just went all out. Um, and that's sort of what I do. It's like let's not mess about. If we need it, we just do it. So if I want to write a book, well, 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 let's not let's not mess about here. Let's get it done. Let's focus. Um, the way I see it is three or four months of hard graft, and then it gives you the rest of the year to relax. So again, that's where people think you're lazy because they see the other times. Maybe you just go to work, and then you're chilling on your own, or you just you know you're just being. But they didn't see the four work four months of absolute hard work, and, and you know. Um, eventually they will know recognize what you have and they don't um, and it's not a competition it's just like you can't magic you can't say life's been easy or it's that i said that to my nephew actually something on holiday my nephew's an adult so they're all adults so family really um i said to him i said what do you think's different to me to everyone else here um that goes beyond my attitude at times because <laughs> 
he was trying to guess, he couldn't get it. And I said, my daughter. And they went, ah. I said, yeah. I said, so had she been here, I'd be a completely different person because my heart would be like open. I said at the moment, it's like my heart is broken. So I'm not 100% me. I do the best I can in a given situation. I continue to grow and ascend, but I'm still not happy. Um, and I'll admit that I ain't happy. I'm not, um, I'm getting happier, but I'm not genuinely happy. I'm fulfilled. That's the difference in the two. Um, my daughter makes my heart sing. Um, I come alive. It just, it's like um, the, the piece, the missing piece to the puzzle sort of thing. Um, so I said, now imagine, because most of us have kids. So I said, imagine other family members were separated from their child for so long and they had to go through what I've been through. How do you think they'd cope with that? Um, and then it, make, it, it puts things into perspective. You know, the things that I've achieved is in itself, when you, when, when you consider it in that sense, is remarkable considering the trauma I carry. Um, most people, and I mean, this ain't building myself up, it's just a, um, an observation. Most people would struggle a lot harder than I have, even though it's hard. Um, my niece, for instance, when I say she goes drinking all the time, someone like that's just going to bury themselves in drink, aren't they? They probably wouldn't be able to get up in the morning, wouldn't be able to do anything, achieve anything, um, probably be a risk to themselves. Um, and my other, my sister would be um, in self pity constantly, um, maybe on tablets or something. You know, you know. So you can see how people would, would um, cope with with trauma and situations. Instead, I use it to heal myself and grow. Um, I use it as my strength rather than a weakness, um, and it helps carry me. Really, I think in some ways because it helps me. You know, what do I need to do? What do I need? Um, and what is the lesson in it? Um, but yeah, things do change us and they have a huge bigger bearing than people appreciate because I'm strong, people take me for granted. So if you can see I can achieve all that, you think, oh, he's, 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 he's fine, he's fine, he's, 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 he's coping through that quite easily. And they say, mate, hey, try to put yourself in my shoes and you see how easy it is because it's not easy at all. Um, I carry a lot on my shoulders, um, but I can't allow it to weigh me too heavily down because I've got things to achieve, you know, so sometimes you put on a back burner in your mind, but you always know something's missing. Um, again, a psychic said that to my mum. I was in a really difficult situation. I was really, really burdened. It was painful. I was sitting there with a psychic who's um, communicating with past loved ones. Uh, you know, I wasn't too sure if he'd be able to do any of what he says he's going to do, but he did because he validated something to my mum about something that happened after a fun after her mother's funeral. Um, something that was left by the gravestone. He wouldn't have known that, no chance in hell. Then he mentioned um, a little girl, my mum's sister, who was young. And I didn't even know she had a sister, so that was quite crazy. I'm learning about this little girl that died young, and I knew nothing of her, and he knew the name. And we get goosebumps now, it's just, um, whoa, even my mind's good. I'm learning a lot as I was going, but even that was like, whoa, okay, this is more validations. Um, but her mum came through and said to her, you know, you try to be strong all the time, but it's okay to, um, you know, it's okay to, um, be vulnerable, like, you know, let it out. Um, and she said, you can put a lot on this, this one's shoulders, this one, he can, he's got, he's got strong shoulders, this one. Um, I'll get a bit emotional, so I'm going to try not to get emotional. Um, cause it's like, man. Sometimes I'm almost brought to my knees, um, but I pick myself up and carry a lot. Um, it doesn't seem fair sometimes, and it isn't, but it's part of our, um, our journey, our growth. So for a past loved one to come through in a psychic reading to pretty much say this one's this one's incredibly strong, when I'm feeling at my most vulnerable, almost at my knees, I'm like, you for, are you for a real? Um, but then I realised that nothing genuinely keeps me down. Um, like I say, I was getting emotional then, and maybe I could get emotional and cry about my daughter for maybe 10, 15 minutes. And then, and then I'd snap myself back in gear and go, damn, let's get on now, now let's just focus. Um, 
uh, and then uh, that's when I achieved my most remarkable achievement, you know. So we can do a lot more than we realise, and I don't think we give ourselves enough credit. But again, like I say, it's always um, some people that are furthest from us are the ones that see the most in us. Um, like I can't even connect to my grandmother. Don't really know who she is. Never really knew her. And yet she can recognise <laughs> in the afterlife how strong I am. And uh, like I say, most people take us for granted. I'll probably digress. I've probably gone off way off track at this point. Um, but yeah, I just want to self-empower people really and show that this isn't all about me, me, me. It's just showing if I can overcome all this, then even if someone can overcome a fraction, I think it's progress. Um, but yeah, start to see the beauty and the trauma because that's where our biggest growth comes. But if we hide and succumb to it, we will lose ourselves entirely. And I think the, the, the contrast between the two is quite stark. You know, you can either lose yourself or grow, um, and the choice is ours. And I think it's best just to grow um, and build a better life. And never rest on your laurels. I just want to close with that because I see that so many times when people get suicidal or they get really um, depressed because they reach a milestone and they don't know how to give themselves more ambitions. You know, they just sort of lose themselves. So, for instance, let's say I say writing a book is my biggest lifetime accomplishment. It's what I want to do the most. And then I, and then I accomplish it. What do I do next? If I never set another goal, it's like life's lost meaning, isn't it? Because you've done it now, you've achieved that. Every time I've achieved something, there is a there is a lull, there is a period where you go, everything, nothing has meaning. It's really weird because you've just achieved that goal, you know. Um, and unless you quickly set something else, it, it can eat you up because you've got nothing else to strive for. So the actual purpose of life is finished, you know, in a sense, because you've done what you set out to do. Um, so always I strive for more. It's a bit like an actor, you know, maybe they get a blockbuster movie, but you see them in other films. They didn't just take the money from that film and just sit at home because it's not good to just sit and fester. Um, take time out, enjoy yourself, but always strive for more. And I think it's just always have that in mind. Don't rot.